Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. All right, we're back on the show. A few new members I want to say hello to. Matthew S., Kendra H., Leah H., James B., and Brian S. Lewis. All new members in the last few days on the David Pakman Membership Program. And joining us on the phone for, for round two, and I'm told that his cell phone reception is just spectacular today, is Wayne Besson from Truth Wins Out. Hey, Wayne. Hey, how are you? Good, good. So tell me, when I had uh, Peter LaBarbera on my show, within about three minutes he mentioned your name, in, in, not in a particularly favorable way. And this wasn't at all on my radar, but later on, uh, Truth Wins Out and Wong Ket superstar Evan Hurst told me that Peter LaBarbera has a habit of working the name Wayne Besson into any interview he does. How did you even get on his radar originally? Well, I've been, I've been going against uh, Peter LaBarbera for many years. We had uh, started sparring in the national media when he worked at the Family Research Council. Uh, in 1998, uh, he was part of a group that launched a million-dollar campaign to say gays could go and um, become straight, basically pray away the gay. <laughs> And uh, they had full-page ads in newspapers like USA Today and the New York Times and even a television campaign. So that's when we, that's when we first met. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Peter LaBarbera has just really gone off the deep end in many ways. Uh, for example, <laughs> I mean, he, he uh, likes to go around talking about uh, sexual practices that most gay people may not have even heard of. <laughs> and... Uh, he also has this habit of going to leather arenas, uh, big leather dances, dressed in uh, in undercover gear, and uh, collecting huge, huge stacks, <laughs> mountainous stacks of gay porn magazines to do quote research. And um, because of this, I just I dubbed him Porno Pete. That right. was his name, and uh, he, he clearly has been defined by this nickname. People often don't know who Peter LaBarber is, but if you go Porno Pete, they'll right. go, oh yeah, I know the guy. So <laughs> I, I, could, I don't really blame him for not liking me very much. If, if I was called Porno Pete, I'd probably have a problem with the person who, who came up with that too. You know, it's funny, after we had him on the show, during the interview when I had him on, he kept saying, your producer should have told me how you, how you felt on the issue of gay rights. And I didn't really entertain it then, but a few days after the interview, he actually sent me an email with a, a number of different grievances. And in that email, he actually said, number one, your producer should have been honest with me about how, what your position was on gay rights. And I, I responded and said, it's not my responsibility to prep you for the interview. It, just a simple Google search for David Pakman gay rights would, would tell you everything you need to know. He also, Why don't you, I, I think you should cut him a deal. I think you should say, you know, next time I'll prep you for my show. Right. If you tell the leather bars <laughs> and S&M clubs your position on gay rights before you get a stamp on your hand and go in and take body pictures uh, that people uh, so repetitiously that people don't know about. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I mean, he, and some of the complaints were pretty specious. He said he didn't know that there would be cameras in our studio so people could see my reaction to what he was saying. And I said... It's a radio and a television program. In, in most TV programs, you have cameras. Uh, yeah, and he, he certainly has no problem taking cameras uh, into <laughs> uh, these gigantic events and taking pictures of people against their will, you know, in, in assless chaps right. and, uh, and plastering them on the Internet and, and humiliating people. So for him to complain about, about this is absolutely outrageous. And, you know, it just goes to show the guy's losing his grip on reality. <laughs> and, and, and it's not just me saying that. This week... The Southern Poverty Law Center came out with several new hate groups. I saw that. And Americans for Truth about Homosexuality, which is Porno Pete's group, uh, is now listed as an official, certified, with a stamp and everything, Southern Poverty Law Center hate group. And Mr. Uh, LaBarbera has certainly earned uh, that award, and I hope he celebrates his new designation over Thanksgiving. I actually saw that list, and I was su surprised to see that I think the number one organization is actually in Springfield, Massachusetts, just 10 minutes at the top. Uh, anti-gay organization. So we're going to try to get one of the representatives in here. I don't even want to say the name because I don't remember offhand. It's um, mass resistance. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, they're really, really out there. They, they, they make they make porno Pete look like uh, a, a beacon of moderation. <laughs> um, actually, they work together quite often. And we're talking about people who have this bizarre obsession with homosexuality. Um, I don't know if they're closet cases or what 
would spur someone to be so obsessed with it. Personally, from I find that when people can't stop talking about it, they secretly want to enter that arena. Well, you it's know, like, you bring up an interesting point, and I have the same questions. So, so, for example, Mel Gibson, he gets pulled over by a police officer. First thing he starts talking about is Jews. Or, for example, Charlie Sheen, he goes into this inc incredible rant in, in a hotel lobby, first thing that comes out of his mouth is N-word. When you're in situations where that's the first thing that comes to mind and that the homophobia is, is similar, what's going on in your mind that it's just the it's on the forefront of your mind 24 hours a day? Yeah, I don't know. I was pulled over by the cops yesterday and I started, yeah, I was drunk and I started yelling, porno pee! No, I'm just, <laughs> no, um, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think when people do that, it shows it's a true, I, I think, uh, light into their character and into their soul, what they really believe and who they really are in periods of stress when they're unfiltered. Um, they, they just talk and, and say what they really want to say. It comes out of them, this, 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 this garbage is spewed. And uh, I think it's indicative of who they really are as people, not just mistakes. They, and I think it's much more revealing than what they write in their press releases when they try to spin the essence of who they are, what they believe, and what they're about. Let me remind our audience we're talking to Wayne Besson from truthwinsout.org. You know, I, I've been actually bringing clothes to the Salvation Army for a while, and just recently I, I started, uh, at, at the request of some audience members, doing some research into them, and it turns out they're horrifically anti-gay. They're, they're claiming that they affirm the New Testament, where it's one man, one woman, at the exclusion of others, and, and that's just the, the, the tip of the iceberg. What exactly is going on over there? Well, the Salvation Army has been a disaster for a while. I mean, they've just been, been very anti-gay, and people should give their, their donations and charity to, 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 to other people. And it's just so ridiculous and so unnecessary. And, and, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, I mean, it's very offensive. It's pretty much against, goes against everything that Jesus stood for. I mean, what they're essentially saying is, if you want soup, take our salvation, mm. you know. And I, I think it's very incredibly offensive. And, and uh, next time they ring their bells, uh, drop a little note in the bucket and say, we're going to give our, our, uh, we're gonna give our donations this year to a more tolerant organization. Yeah, I mean, the thing for me is it's just, it is so convenient. They've got those 24-hour drop boxes. You just drop off your bag of clothes. I, don't, I can't even think of another place. I guess maybe if I thought hard, I could within, within a few miles of where I live. Uh, but we've, we've got to find some other places to bring our, our clothes, do we not? We certainly do. We certainly do. Um, and there, there are out there people just Google out, and, and they'll find some some other alternative out there that uh, is better. Hey, last thing here in the last minute or so we have left. John McCain on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We are never going to be able to provide uh, uh, to, to John McCain, nobody's going to be able to provide what he is asking for to say, okay, let's repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, are we? He'll just keep tacking things on to his list. Yeah, he has no intention of, of following the facts or the truth. He just has a viewpoint, and that's to ban LGBT, LGBT people from serving in the military. And uh, there's nothing anybody's going to say. It's a stalling tactic on his part. He's very disingenuous. And I think the guy is just, at this point, is a circus act. I mean, he's a phony. Anybody, I mean, what he did with freaking Sarah Palin showed a real contempt for this country. Um, and I would never have said that before he picked Palin. And I think the fact that he ran his campaign, he, he, he going basically against everything he's ever stood for, from campaign finance to uh, immigration to you name it. I mean, the guy is so pathetic that he ran away from the label Maverick, which he had defined his career on. It's even in a book. Yeah, wrote. it's in the title, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the title, and this all of a sudden goes, oh, I don't read the title. I'm not a maverick. Right. It, it's just hard to believe anybody voted for somebody that's transparently phony and power-hungry. And uh, John McCain is only about John McCain. He's shown this time and again. And, uh, you know, I, 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 at one point I never supported him politically at all, but I certainly had a, a little bit of respect for him. Uh, th that is so evaporated from, hmm. from the idea of respecting this man. I don't know how anybody could, even if you support his politics. I mean, if it were somebody on the left who had changed their positions to that extent and, and uh, was that disingenuous, I wouldn't trust them either. It would be like if Obama said, you know, I never really ran on that whole hope thing. I don't remember even saying it. And then it's like, wait a second, didn't you write a book called The Audacity of Hope? Yeah, he keeps the way he's going. A lot of us are going to have trouble remembering that part of his campaign. All right, but, well, uh, we've been, <laughs> that's a whole other story. We've been speaking with Wayne Besson, truthwinsout.org. Glad we could make it happen, Wayne. Thank you. Okay, take care, Lewis. Let's go to break, and we'll come back. We, it is time 
to give away the iPad. So we'll be back after this, davidpackman.com. The David Pakman Show at davidpackman.com. The David Pakman Show is made possible by listeners like you and by Greenfield Savings Bank, building a strong community one account at a time, with neighborhood offices in Greenfield, Amherst, Conway, Shelburne Falls, South Deerfield, and Turner's Falls, and online at greenfieldsavings.com. By the Daily Hampshire Gazette and gazettenet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. Find out more about underwriting The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com.